In this animation, we will introduce you to the microscopy experimental technique and a basic light microscope. Microscopy is used to study the shape, morphology, and properties of cells, tissues, or organisms that cannot otherwise be seen by eye. Microscopy is also used to determine the presence or absence of certain types of cells or organelles in a sample or specimen of tissue, as well as to count the number of objects in a specific volume, for example, the number of cells in a sample. In this animation, we will provide you with an overview of optical or light microscopy in which light is focused through a lens or a series of lenses to magnify or enlarge a sample. There are several different types of light microscopy, including bright field, dark field, phase contrast, confocal, and fluorescence. In this animation, we will touch upon bright field and phase contrast microscopy, and then we will discuss fluorescence microscopy in the next animation. All light microscopes have several components, including a light source such as a halogen light bulb or laser, a light source on-off switch with a knob to adjust its intensity, a diaphragm and condenser to focus the light onto the sample, a stage to hold the sample, controls to move the stage, focus knobs for coarse and fine focus adjustment, objectives to magnify the sample, and an eyepiece through which the researcher can view the sample. In addition, microscopes are often fitted with a digital camera and a computer for a scientist to capture images viewed through the microscope. To view a sample under the microscope, the researcher first places the object on the stage and then manipulates the controls, including the light, focus, stage position, and objectives, while viewing the sample through the eyepiece until a clear image is obtained. In this case, when the researcher is using a 4x objective, the image is four times larger than when it's normally viewed at this distance. When the objective is changed to a 20x objective, the image is now 20 times larger than when it's normally viewed at this distance. In a standard light microscope, the sample is magnified or appears larger by transmitting and focusing the light from the light source onto the sample on the stage using the condenser. The image of the sample is then magnified through a series of lenses in the objective and can then be viewed by the eye through the eyepiece. The amount of magnification that can be achieved by a light microscope is limited to the wavelength of light. As a result, objectives higher than 100x are not used on a light microscope as it will have reached the limitations of its resolution. If a higher magnification is desired, then other microscopy techniques, such as electron microscopy, are used. A microscope is used to view many different types of samples, including cells growing in tissue culture, tissue samples, or whole organisms. While cells growing in tissue culture can often be simply placed upon the microscope, other samples need to be prepared and processed prior to viewing under the microscope. Many samples that a researcher would like to examine under the microscope are transparent and lack sufficient contrast to view a sample. Phase contrast microscopy can be used to view such transparent samples, such as unstained cells growing in tissue culture, as it increases the contrast of a sample. However, Phase contrast microscopy cannot be used to view specific proteins or some cellular structures. To view, quantify, and localize particular cellular structures and proteins, a researcher uses dyes, stains, or antibody labeling. In histology, or the microscopic study of tissues and cells, different stains are used to highlight specific cellular structures, including hematoxylin, which stains nucleic acid structures blue, eosin, which stains basic structures such as a cell cytoplasm pink, and oil red O, which stains lipids red, just to name a few. Expression, modification, and or localization of specific proteins can be visualized using immunohistochemistry, or IHC. IHC utilizes a series of steps to first specifically recognize and bind a protein of interest using antibodies and then convert this detection into a colorimetric signal that can be viewed under the microscope. We have now covered basic light microscopy and its primary laboratory applications. We will discuss fluorescence microscopy, which is a specialized type of light microscopy in the fluorescence microscopy animation.